So here's a little video to recap what we've been doing in class. This first part is on power, voltage and current and uh, this is the formula that we've been using that you are familiar with. Power is very important, remember. Let's just apply this to a situation where we have a kettle, for example, that has a power of 2.3 kilowatts and the mains voltage is 230 volts. So now we want to know what is the current. So therefore we need to rearrange the formula. If you look at the formula, it says P equals V times I, so we need to do the opposite of times, so we need to divide by V to get rid of the V on the right, and then we have the I isolated, and if we do that, then we get the current is equal to power divided by voltage. In this case, I have 2.3 kilowatts, so that is 2,300 watts, divided by 230 volts, and that gives me 10 amps. The next important formula that we learned about is energy is power times time. So if we have a situation where we have uh, the same kettle again, say, here's our formula, power times time is equal to energy. Uh, so the same kettle, power is 2.3 kilowatts. And uh, say it's on for a time in total, say in an afternoon when you boil water repeatedly for 30 minutes. Now, to get the energy in joules, we need to uh, do the following. We say in joules, this is nicely outside the frame here, so I need to change that. In joules, I would get um, the time in seconds, so the time would be 30 times 60, and that makes uh, 1800 seconds, as you know. So therefore, I get the energy is equal to um, power, this time in watts, very important, so 2300 watts times 1800 seconds. So that gives me, well, I need to get my calculator to do this, 4 million That would be 4,140,000 joules. I can express this in um, kilowatt hours as well. And to calculate this in kilowatt hours, I need the power in kilowatts and the time in hours, as the name suggests. So in kilowatt hours, I get the time in, so 30 minutes is equal to 0 0.5 hours and the energy would be therefore equal to 2.3 kilowatts times 0 0.5 hours and that gives me half of 2.3 so 1.15 kilowatt hours. So the next law that we learned about is Ohm's law and Ohm's law is nothing else but the resistance is voltage divided by a current. So if we take the same situation that we had a moment ago, where we have a kettle uh, connected to the mains, 230 volts, and there's a current of 10 amps flowing through it as we calculated, then we divide the 230 volts by the 10 amps, and that gives us 23 ohms. And remember the unit is the ohm written as the Greek capital letter omega. And just a second example for this. Um, so Ohm's law, again, we have R equals V over I. And let's say in this situation, uh, we have 230 volts again, but the current is only 10 milliamps. So that's 10 thousandths of an amp. So we need to convert the current into amps first. And they, we do that by dividing it by a thousand. So we get 0 0.010 amps if we divide 10 by a thousand. Uh, of course for the current in amps you expect a smaller number so just think about that first because milliamp is a smaller unit so if you convert to a bigger unit you expect something smaller. So 230 divided by 0 0.010 that gives us 23,000 ohms and if you wish you can convert this into kilo ohms uh, that would then make 23 kilo ohms but that's the last step is not mandatory. Another formula that we talked about is uh, the relationship between current 
the charge and the time and we said that current is charge over time so if I want to uh, find out what the current uh, the charge is that was transferred in an example where I have a current of 500 milliamps and a time of two minutes for example for a light bulb that is being lit for two minutes then I rearrange it and uh, if it is Q divided by T on the right then I want to get Q by itself so since it's Q divided by T I multiply by T and bring it to the left and then swap right and left side and I get Q equals IT very easy to remember quit um, so I have my formula correctly and now I just need to put in the values if I do that I have Q equals IT um, equals 0 0.5 amps because 500 milliamps divided by 1000 gives me 0 0.5 and two minutes I need to change into seconds so that gives me 60 seconds per minute so 120 seconds in total 0 0.5 times 120 gives me 60 coulomb then in total remember the unit of charge is coulomb now we get to the last formula and the last formula is voltage is energy divided by charge and let's say we have the same situation where we have 60 coulombs just like before and I have voltage of 3 volts then I have my formula here voltage is equal to energy per charge in this case I'm interested in the energy that is transferred so I need to rearrange the formula E divided by Q I do the opposite I do E uh, I multiply both sides by Q so I get E equals V times Q and then I have 3 volts times 60 coulombs and that gives me 180 joules I just want to show how to rearrange this formula and apply it in a different context so if we have the situation where we have 3 volts again and I have uh, now an energy transferred of 1500 joules how would I actually know how much charge has been transferred well we have our formula of v equals e over q so what i would uh, i would write that down first now this is not as simple to rearrange as a formula um, because if i multiply by q i end up on the left side uh, with q times v equals e but we want q by itself so therefore i need to put in a second step and that would be dividing by v so i get a Q by itself and then I have E divided by V now once you've done that you can put in the values and you get Q equals 1500 divided by 3 volts and that gives me of course 500 remember the unit of the charge Q is the Coulomb capital C that's it so far so I look forward to seeing your test results uh, on Monday or whenever you're going to do, to do it next week and uh, good luck with your preparation and success.